Welcome back to Hello Nigeria. Now it's time for our top story. As mentioned earlier, we'll be looking at sexual and reproductive health and rights advocacy. Our guest today is one of Nigeria's 100 most inspiring women by leading Africa 2018. She is the convener and the executive director of Heal for Africa Initiative, an incorporated NGO com committed to implementing SDGs 1 to 6 across communities in Africa, and the convener of Pay Attention to Her project, which seeks to empower and enlighten women across Nigeria. Nigeria on female health issues. She is also a public health enthusiast, a health communicator, sexual and reproductive health rights advocate, content creator, and seasoned influencer. Our guest today is a medical doctor, popularly known as the health attainer. We have with us Dr. Kale. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me here. It's good today. to have you after over a year of planning this interview. Oh, Finally, well. it has happened. <laughs> yes, we're here now, so Brilliant. Yeah, I'm glad I'm really here. All right, so I, I'm, I'm glad that we're having this conversation now. We're talking about sexual and reproductive health and rights advocacy. So we're looking at two angles, sexual and reproductive health, which is one I think you should take first. And I know your organization is doing something in that regard. So you, you're creating menstruation awareness. Can you give us some information about that? Okay, actually, my um, NGO, Heal for Africa Initiative, that's just one of the projects. It's called PAD Project. Pay attention to her project. So what we are doing is we are taking, you know, women as a topic, girls, and women as a topic, as a focus, and then we're, you know, talking about all the, um, you know, health issues, you know, concerning women and also women rights. So for our first project, we're doing um, menstrual awareness. You understand because we understand that um, the teenage children, especially in the schools, the IDP camps, they are really at, uh, disadvantaged. They do not, um, you know, go through their menstrual cycle hygienically, and at puberty, that's like the first step. You know, if you don't get things right at that time, you can, you know, get, you know, some complications later in life um, as a result of, you know, unhygienic, you know, puberty, unhygienic menstruation. So we're starting with the teenage girls. We're starting, we want to catch them young, you understand, because really that's where it all starts at puberty. So for our first project, we're targeting teenage girls, especially in secondary schools and then the IDP, IDP camps. So that's just the beginning, actually, because we will be branching out to, you know, talking about women, you know, women health, reproductive health, sexual health and rights. So you see, we're just, we just decided, okay, we have to start from the very beginning because, yes, maternal and, you know, newborn health is really important, but you have to trace it down, trail it back, you know, to sexual and reproductive health. And I think that's very important, and that's what... We're trying to do with the NGO. Brilliant. So what are some of the repercussions of not having the best of hygiene when you're going through pu um, puberty with regards to menstruation? Okay, so um, you have vaginal infections that start from, you know, the lower end of the vagina and then it goes up, 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 up until it gets to the top. You know, the whole sexual and repro the whole reproductive tract, you know, it goes, it goes all the way up, the vagina, the cervix, the ovaries, the fallopian tube and then the uterus that's the womb so you know this starts from the outside so we need to take care of the outside first of all so it doesn't affect the inside so that's where we're, that's speaking about talk, taking care of the outside of a woman's genitals i think that's a very important conversation because like you mentioned if you don't um if we don't have proper hygiene it could lead to infections that could lead to infertility unfortunately definitely so now let's talk about some of the myths concerning me, um, vaginal hygiene. hygiene some of the yeah. myths we, we hear stuff like or you have to use, you know, in fact, tell us about some of the things that you use. Okay, it's actually, it's very, it's, it's a topic that, you know, when it comes up on the internet, everybody's going haywire, and then you're hearing a lot of funny, funny stuff, and then a lot of handles that are not run or manned by health personnel, you know, they're all out there telling you to steam your vagina, whatever that means. I mean, they tell you to sit on hot water and then put all sorts of things into the vagina. I mean, the vagina is... is it's, it's self-cleansing, do you understand? Like, I don't know why women should douch. Douching means, you know, putting water and soap and all those feminine hygiene products into your vagina. There's no need for that because the vagina is self-cleansing. Is that not perfect? Is, it, is, that not, is that not nice to know that all you really need to do is just clean the outside with warm water, or um, tepid water, and then a non-perfumed soap or just... You know, something very, very light, something like as um, oh, yeah. <laughs> Bad would say. So just something like, because um, if you have a stench or um, a pungent odor coming from your vagina, it definitely has to be from the outside, from the inside, because 
if you clean the outside and then you still have all that coming out, then you need to look further in, you understand? So these are the myths. They say, they call it toilet infection. And when someone comes at me and says, I have toilet infection, and I'm like, okay. There are a lot of other things you can get from the toilet, like flu, like hepatitis A, and some other things. But when girls say they have toilet infection, they actually mean they have you know, vaginal infection, which necessarily they didn't get from the toilet. Mm. Yes, they didn't get it from. So what are some <laughs> of the statistics in Nigeria today with regards to young women and okay. um, sexual and reproductive health and everything that's going on around that, what are some of the heinous figures that we are seeing and why is this so important right okay, now? Okay, we, uh, we are seeing a lot of women getting raped, over one million in a year. We're seeing them getting raped. We're, we're, we're hearing about a lot of women who, you know, after puberty, later in life, they're having chronic pelvic infections. There's a lot of infertility stories going on. Going on. Then, you know, there are some things that happen to you when you're younger and then it affects you, affects you you know, during your reproductive life, you find it difficult to give birth, you know, you start having some kind of, you know, infections, ovaries and the, the um, fallopian tubes in the uterus. So all this start from now. Okay, like we heard about what's happening on the internet now, rape. It's a very big issue because people do not understand the importance of sexual rights. Okay, first of all, um, sexual and reproductive um, health and rights, it's having a complete state of physical, mental and social well-being, especially in regards to, you know, your sexuality and your reproduction. Do you understand? So the same applies to, you know, sexual and reproductive rights. As humans, we have human rights. Women, we have rights as women. And you have rights relating to your sexual life and your reproductive life. Okay, so what are some of the rights that Okay, we have? now you have a right to decide when you want to reproduce. You will have the right to, re uh, to you have the right um, to reproduce like when you want, as often as you want. Except when... in China. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's 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 totally up to you. Nobody should make that decision for you. And also for the sexual rights, you have the right to have a satisfying and pleasurable sexual life, a safe sexual life. You have you have the right to access to sexual education which is something a lot of us as Africans, as Nigerians, run away from. You have the right to sexual education. You have the right to accurate information about your sexual health. Sorry, doctor, just okay. very quickly. We have the right to sexual education, but unfortunately, sex education is left out of our school curriculums. How does this work? That's because we do not want to do the right thing because of our social, you know, our social our values, our moral standards. Moral I think we're moral very standards. conservative people. And it puts us into a lot of trouble because... You need to be prepared. A lot of people, the first time they ever experience menstruation is when it happens to them. A lot of people don't even know. I, I, I didn't know about it until, you know, I experienced it. I experienced it at 16, you can imagine. So I hear about it, I talk about it, but it's different when you don't have, you know, someone doesn't deliberately, intentionally sit you down and talk to you about it. Same applies with sex. Some people, the first time they ever experience sex is rape. The very first time, and then... Fine, it's, it has happened. What, what do you do next to protect yourself now so it doesn't affect your future? But if you don't have that information, it's, it's strange. And then you just hide, you know, go back into your shell. And the next thing, you're having sexually transmitted infections. The next thing you're having, um, you know, you get pregnant or something happens. And then, you know, everybody starts going, hey, why? Uh, okay, don't, don't, okay. We also know the problem about abortion. We ha it's not legal in the country. People frown at it and all of that. So if we know about all these things, it won't get to that point. So sexual education, access to accurate information about our sexual health and rights is very important. About the sexual rights, again, you have your right to privacy. You have the right to have sex. Non-coercive, you understand? You shouldn't be lured into it. You shouldn't be coerced into having sex. It shouldn't be forceful. It shouldn't be violent. So at the end of the day, that's more like you giving your consent to it as well. Yes, consent is everything. Like when it comes to sexual rights, consent is everything. And then, um, okay, now we're talking about female education, female education. We are educating our women as much as we can. But the boys, the men, some people are rapists and they don't even know it. Absolutely. It's that bad. Yeah. They, they do not know that at some point when a girl withdraws consent, 
it turns you into a rapist because, I mean, she said no at that point. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have known this until we had a conversation with the representative from Warif. They had the Boys Conversation Cafe, okay. which was scheduled for a certain duration. And she actually told us that some of these boys didn't actually know they were rapists. Like, they didn't know what what amounted to rape. Now, the thing is, some of them think, yes, some of them think it's their, fun, it's their fundamental right, right to have sex with whomever they want to at whatever time, which is why we're emphasizing consent. Consent before and during the act. I remember a case in criminal law. I think it's R against Kuti or R against Kutugi. I'm not quite sure. And the, the, the principle in that case was that consent at any point withdrawn amounts to rape. So if you're in the course of a sexual intercourse and the woman says, stop, any further penetration is rape. Rape, yeah. Unfortunately, we're in a society that shames the people who are participating that will say, why did you allow him? Why did you go to his house? Why did you wear what you wore? Why so did you go all the way from Bega to Aja? Uh -huh, yeah, <laughs> we exactly. You understand, like, so everybody somehow tries to, you know, pin it on the women. Absolutely. Boys need to be educated. Like, we can't do all the education by ourselves yeah. or to the girls. Boys need to know their boundaries. They need to know that some things they do is right or wrong. Absolutely. Do you understand? Right to privacy, right. Then for the women who are married, your, your reproductive right is your right. Do you understand? Yeah. You can have that conversation, you know, with your spouse. But you need to know that you have rights, mm -hmm. you know, even in your reproductive health. Wait, so if the husband wants three kids and she wants two kids... It's not automatic. It does, it's not automatic that what the husband wants is what must happen. Mm -hmm. They need to have that conversation because it's her body. Yes, I get you get married and then, you know, you belong to your husband and all of that. But it's, it's a conversation that, you know, both of them should have, you understand. And then rights and access to contraceptives. Family planning. Yeah. We have, the economy is bad. And then we're having more children than we can cater for. Yeah. You know, some people think having a lot of children is bragging rights. My father had a lot of children. Thank God he was able to, you know, train everybody to this level. Like, my parents are awesome people, like, you understand. But mm -hmm. some people, they don't have the resources to take care of all the children they give birth to. And that's because some, some did not have access to contraceptives or they do not want contraceptives because their faith, their religion, the society, mm -hmm. even some, you know, some um, traditions, they frown at contraceptives. Okay, so if you're frowning at contraceptives, how do you explain birthing children that you cannot cater for? Yeah. Do you understand? Like, so we need to start from the base, like from the foundation. Let's go, you know, step by step. The first thing we need to address is the sexual education and the reproductive education. First of all, let's know what we're talking about. Let's know all the things that are, you know, um, that, are, that are at stake. Mm -hmm. You say, oh, um, I, I want to have three children. The fourth one is a mistake. No, it's not a mistake. You had sex, unprotected sex with your partner. Yeah. And you, you gave birth to a child or you got pregnant. Then what next? Do you understand? So if we are able to you know, sort out these things from the foundation. Mm. We won't get to the point where we are deba debating if abortion is legal or not, if it's safe or not, if contraceptive is, leg is legal or acceptable in the, in the, you know, in your religion or whatever it is. There are other methods, withdrawal methods, you know, natural birth control measures that if you know about and you frown at contraceptives, fine, then you can do those. But it is not, ignorance is not an excuse. True. You know, yeah. for not fam planning your family right. But well, let's speak about that what next and let's okay. touch on it in terms of sexual assault and rape. I want us to stay as relevant as we can to what's currently going on on social media. And in case you're not aware, a lot of young women aged 16, 17, 18, and some even younger have come out on social media over the past 12 hours and they've been ousting the name of boys that are the same age as them that have been raping and sexually harassing them. A lot of boys have been mentioned and it's not even just people within the borders of Nigeria. A lot of people are mentioned that are in university in other countries around the world, etc. What does one do and what are the steps that one has to take as soon as they are sexually violated in any way? Okay, first of all, don't keep quiet. That's why we have a lot of people coming out years after, children after, you know, you're already a single mom, infections after, you know, a lot of things. So first things first, report to the, uh, the law, like the police, and then you have to report to a doctor, you understand? There are, you know, there are prophylactics that you can, you can take. The doctor will examine you, they would, you know, that it's even help with the, whatever case you want yes. to, 
you know, you want to make, if you, if you want to go to court, however you want to, you know, how far you want to go, a doctor's report will really help. And not just the report, it can help your health also. There are emergency contraceptive pills that will be given to you, depending on your, if, you, if that period was your safe period or unsafe period, do you understand? And then the antibiotics, antiretrovirals, whatever it is. So at the end of the day, it's very important that they very, see the doctor. Yes, I think it's, it's very even important. more important that as soon as it happens, they see a doctor first. First, yes. So that they can administer whatever post-exposure prophylaxis, prophylaxis they give them yeah. and do whatever checks. And preferably a general hospital. So that that one, the result cannot be contended. Content, yeah. Uh, contended. Yeah. Rather, so finally, Dr. Kel, before we let you go, um, quick advice, quick tips on women on how to care for their genitals. What are the things to look out for? What are, You've mentioned some of the things to avoid. Okay. You've mentioned that we should avoid douching, using scented soaps. You know, there's also the feminine um, hygiene not stuff necessary. that they use. So not what are the things women should look out for and what are the things they should take note of when caring for their bodies, knowing that if you don't care for your body, you could lead to... Um, infections that will cause infertility? First of all, don't, don't um, take all the advice you see on the internet. That's the very, very important point because we go there and see all sorts of things. That's that. And secondly, apart from, uh, just vaginal care generally, make sure you don't douche, make sure you, you know, clean your vagina just outwardly. Don't go inside, don't put anything into your vagina. Whatever is going into your vagina has to be clean. Your hands, Okay, whatever goes into your vagina has to be clean, basically. Do you understand? And then um, people who have, who, people who, are, who try to be over hygienic, they, they, they tend to have more recurrent, you know, vaginal infections because they are doing something that's counterproductive because the vagina has normal flora, normal bacteria that fi help fight infections. So if you do all the over, you know, the douching and all of that, you kill all the normal bacteria there and then you keep having recurrent um, vaginal infections, that's one. And then two, um, nutrition. You are what you eat. Nutrition is very important. If you smoke, it's bad for your vagina. If you eat a lot of junk, of course, you're not going to have a very he healthy vagina. So natural foods, fruits, vegetables, lots of water. Water is good. It helps to lubricate. It helps to keep it clean and all of that. So that, that is that. And then people who use a lot, of, a lot of antibiotics, that's a very big problem in our society. Oh, we have Every people who just thing, feel any slight discomfort and pop antibiotics as... You kill the normal flora and then you distort the, you know, the normal flora in the, in the vagina. So okay. don't take too much of antibiotics. Don't take, don't take antibiotics that was not prescribed to you by a doctor for a reason. And it shouldn't be more than the time it was prescribed because some people, okay, my doctor prescribed for four days and then I'm okay. Then when they have one slight, you know, they feel some funny things on their body or something, they go and take the same thing when it's not necessary. So at the end then, of the day, no over-the-counter prescriptions and medication. Make sure you see your doctor. Fantastic. Thank Fantastic. you so much, Thank Dr. you so Kel. much, Dr. Kel. Okay. Now, if you want more information on this, Dr. Kel dishes out medical information. At least, if you can't trust anything you see on the internet, you can trust what Dr. Kel puts out there because she's done her research and she's a trained personnel in that regard. Follow her on Instagram at healthattainer to find out more information with regards to sexual and reproductive health and rights. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank, Thank you. you so much for having me. To enjoy more of this, our Ugonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.